And we have a red light. Cool. Okay. So yes, I am filming this. Um, so this meeting is about personal planning. It's not about project management. It's not about planning your production flow or how you're going to handle all these NCRs or what's going to happen with the stress meeting later today. <laughs> this is about personal planning. And when we talk about that, a lot of people say that's time management. I got it, time management. I've done this before. Well, you can't manage time. There's 24 hours, they're coming, they're going. It's going to happen the same amount of time no matter what you do. You can only manage the tasks you accomplish, the order and the priority that you approach those tasks with. Maybe you can get the door ready. So, Eisenhower matrix is a good way to look at this. You've got urgent and important. My wife's gone into labor. I have to take her to the hospital. Everything else out of the way. Urgent and important. You just do those things naturally. We do them naturally. We don't need to teach somebody place on fire, grab fire extinguisher, or run like hell because it's going to blow up. But those things are natural. It's the not urgent, but still important. In two weeks, the FAA is coming, and they're going to review my stuff. Well, I got two weeks. <laughs> now, uh, the not urgent and not important, we should ignore, <laughs> right? It's not urgent, it's not important. Throw it away. This is not for work. <laughs> so, how about urgent and not important? We can delegate that. This needs to be handled right away. That's your problem. Handle it. I got important stuff to do. But keep in mind, usually when you delegate something, you kind of have a responsibility to follow up on it later. And the follow up then becomes not urgent and important. And that you have to plan, and that's what we're talking about, is how do you plan not urgent, important stuff? Well, one of the things that happens is a lot of times we're not honest about what's urgent or not. There is a common situation that I'm as guilty as the next person. This is really important. Crap, I'm going to do it right now, because if I don't do it right now, I'll probably forget. We're taking something that's not urgent, making it urgent because of our terrible ability to plan. So, and then people come to us with stuff. Hey, Doug, I need you to look at this right now. Now they don't need me to look at it right now, but they really need me to look at it. The right now part is because I know he'll forget. <laughs> so, there's a question of trust in the other person that you're asking or trust in yourself allowing you to make something just important, not urgent. So you have to be honest about this. So you have to have faith. You gotta have faith in your ability to do things in the future. That's planning. That's what we're gonna develop. You will have the faith. I like it, it's all about believing. You don't know how it will happen, but you know it will happen. That's faith. You have to believe in yourself. <laughs> so this is a, what we're going to do is create this planning system that gets you to believe in yourself. Now you need a tool and how to use that tool. And it's got to be the right tool for the job. In looking at a tool, I, what I want to do is show you what we're going to look at is what you're using now, I want to show you a little bit about Franklin Planner, what that is, and what I came up with for what we can use here. So what are we doing now? Well, we have deferred email inbox. We have this giant email box that's got 13,000 items in it, and by God, I'm going to get to all of them someday. They're all important, <laughs> all 13,000 of them. <clears throat> Even the update from the Facebook from my second cousin, Louise, right? So. You've got this deferred inbox. It doesn't work. You know it doesn't work. Stuff is up there. You even go to the trouble of saying, 
undo that I read this, so it'll stay highlighted. <laughs> we all have done that. But when we found that button, we went, ah, oh, I'm saved. I can make it bold again. So, Google Calendar. Now, we use Google Calendar. It's very effective. It warns you. It tells you things are happening. However, a task that you have to do is not an appointment. This is an appointment. A task that you have to do, it doesn't live at a time. It, it's a to-do, and you can get to it sooner or later as you become available. And if you don't get to it today, you don't want it to slide off your list. See, that email goes off your list. It goes off the first 55 or whatever that show on page one. Once it goes off of that, they're, 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 that's old news. If I didn't get to it by then, I guess it's not that important. It's just throwing it away, effectively. The same thing goes with the calendar. If I didn't get to it on the day I put it on the calendar, how often do you really go back and look at yesterday, last month? If something happens to fall on the 28th day of the month, it might not get done. So, calendar's not really that great. Yellow pad, he's a yellow pad guy. Donnie was a yellow pad guy. Yellow pad's good. If you do it every day, and you do it right, and you move everything forward, and you don't try to use yesterday's, and you, you start going back to the day before, blah, 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 and not perfect. And it doesn't integrate well with your other stuff. Um, has some good things about it. Composition notebook, same thing, right? This is same issues. Then we have our built-in systems, stuff that rings bugs us, the NCR system, bang, bang, got another NCR to sign off or whatever, or the follow-up system if you're in purchasing, or the project manager system if you're one of the people managing, uh, managing the projects. So those other systems are there. I tried using Google Tasks. The problem was I can only plan something. It goes on my list whether I need to do it today, tomorrow, a week from now, or two weeks from now. So my list gets huge, and once your list is huge, you don't use it. So this was what a Franklin Planner looked like. I used to carry one of these around. I looked like a Bible salesman. I had this thing with me all the time, except when I left it on somebody's toolbox and walked away and couldn't remember where I put it. I carried it everywhere. It was a great system. Every day, it wasn't just the book. What was great about it is that it came with training. You got these audio tapes and you did it. I went to the seminar because I was so jacked up about it. I thought it was so great. I made lots of money because I used the Franklin Day Planner system. If I thought it would work for us, I'd buy them for everybody. It's like 150 bucks a year or something. Doesn't matter. It's so, it made, made me so much more productive. I made that up in a week, a day or two. You know, it's just huge. But what it did was it made you list everything, prioritize it, put it in order, execute it. You had a place for all your tasks on the left. You had a list for your calendar, and then you had a place to put notes as the day went on. It was all in one place. They give you a whole system of indexing it and everything. It was fantastic. Computers have evolved. So what brought the Franklin Planner? So why am I still not carrying that thing around? So there's too many other systems taking over too much more of my day. Gmail. Email has become an integral part of my day. The calendar. I don't want a calendar on a piece of paper. I want it going bling, bugging me. Hey, you got a meeting coming up. These people are showing up. They expect you to be ready. So the calendar, the email, and then notes and things I do. A lot of what I do is on the computer. So this didn't work with that. Those two things don't integrate very well. And writing stuff down that I'm typing in. Can't copy and paste, all that kind of stuff. So my calendar's on my phone as well. My phone is now integrated. I got my phone with me all the time. God, I'm carrying it anyway. Why can't I use it? So what we need... Oh, by the way, the other thing about the Franklin, it was visible. It was always there, right? The visible part is important. It's an important way how we manage, how we make stuff, right? We want visible shelves, visible labels, visible stuff. It's important for how we should manage. It should be visible. So what we need is a Franklin-style systematized use of a modern, visible computer phone app-based system. 
And that's what I picked Todoist. But Todoist on its own is just a tool if you don't use it the way that Franklin was trained. It was the training and the application of it that made it work. And that's why I wanted to do this today. So we're going to use Todoist, and your, the account can be loaded on any smartphone. They've got Android and Apple stuff. It goes on your desktop. It integrates to Chrome and to Gmail really nicely. So Abby will invite each. I've done, I've done that. Everybody's been invited to Todoist. You accept the invite. Download it, log in with your Google Gmail account. So make sure you're logged into your Gmail, your Epic Gmail account, and click log in with your Gmail account, pick your Epic Gmail account, and it will automatically log you in. And then those things are linked. It's smart. It your calendar stuff will just kind of pop up in there. It's kind of cool. The Next thing you do is you add Chrome integration. Now what the Chrome integration does for you is if you look, you see this little number three up here? This will be at the end of your browser bar all the time. It's showing you how many tasks you have remaining today. And you click on that little thing and the Todoist app pops up. You click on it again, it goes away. So you go boop, add a task, do a thing, check something off. And it goes right back away. We all have the email up anyway all the time, so this is fine. And then the Gmail integration adds this little Todoist logo here. And that, what that does is it adds a task that's linked to the email that you're looking at. So you're reading an email. How often do you read an email? You've read it. Now you've got something to do about it before you but you don't want to do it right now. That's how your email inbox got to 13,000 line items. <laughs> so it's important that I do it, but I can't do it right now. It's not urgent, and I don't have two seconds to just and do it. So you click that, and then you can archive that email. You're done with it. Now you have a task to address it later. You can set that task for three days from now. You will get to it with confidence. You could edit the name of it. It doesn't have to stay the subject line. You can, it, it'll keep the link alive. It's just cool. So I want you to add a recurring task, planning and solitude. Make it a red priority. So priorities are colors. Sorry, Brian Chinelli. <laughs> He's colorblind. <laughs> okay. He's, uh, so, Red, orange, yellow. So planning and solitude. This is the meat of what we're talking about. You need to plan your day. It doesn't take that long. But this is a process that you're expected to do it. My follow-up, because this is important, my follow-up will be following up with each of you and seeing that you actually did this. I'll be coming around and saying, go ahead, pull it up, let me see. <laughs> I'll look at the tasks you completed and the tasks that you have left to do, and I want to see that if you've got something up there, it is prioritized, red, yellow, or orange. Is it red, i got to do it today, orange, I should do it today, or yellow, I'll do it today if I have time. If you know you're not going to do it today, I'd like to get it done today, but I've just overloaded, i got too much stuff. Don't plan it for today. You click on the little button and move it forward. Take it off the list today. Put stuff on the list today that you think you can get done today. Or you should, or you have to get done today. Order your tasks. Slide them up and down. So it'll put the reds at the top, orange in the middle, yellows at the bottom. Anything unprioritized, it puts below that white. That, that ought to be just tasks you've added during the day. Can you call this guy back and let him know something? Click, call back, let him know. Now it's in there. You don't need to prioritize that. That's during the day. You plan your day at the beginning of the day. Mike Tyson said, 
every boxer has a plan when he goes in the ring <laughs> until he gets hit in the face. <laughs> so this is kind of planning your day. You still don't go in without a plan. So you order your tasks. Inside the reds, you move the one at the top you're going to do first. So you've planned your day. And then you check off planning in solitude and move on to the next thing. Don't go checking your email first. Your email is what other people want you to do. Those are their goals. Those are their things that are important to them, urgent for them. That's mighty kind of you to give up your day to everybody else who happens to know your email address. <laughs> Plan your day. Then check your email. Now, if you check it at home before you come into work and you plan your day when you come into here, that's fine. You can knock a few things out on the treadmill. I do that. But when you get here or when you plan your day, plan it thinking about your own goals, your own desires. This is what I've got to get done today. Boom. You lay it out. Then as you're looking at these emails, you're looking at them with your plan in mind. Everything you're doing, you're doing with your plan in mind. Somebody says, hey, can you look at this? Uh, not right now. I might be able to get to it tomorrow. Well, that'd be good. Okay, let me put it on the list. Done. I'll get to it tomorrow. You're no longer that length of time distracted. And they have confidence in your ability that you've written it down. You're going to get to it. So they feel better about leaving you alone and not making an important task urgent. So... When you finish planning your day, you check off planning in solitude. You add tasks quickly during the day so you can prioritize them later at your next planning session. Or move them forward or whatever. It's plenty okay that all your tasks, you add to today as the day goes on. You don't bother about setting them for a date in the future. Because you'll do that in the morning. Or in the evening if that's your thing. I think better in the morning. So I always think about planning as a morning thing. So throughout your day, add your task quickly. You can prioritize it later. Your in-block box is no longer your task list. You have finally taken control of your own life. <laughs> so it's a good idea to get to inbox zero. Does everybody here know that the archive button doesn't delete your emails? Yes? And if you just archive them off, you can still search them. They're still there. You don't need to delete everything. You don't need to delete anything. I don't delete anything. I archive everything. It's just become my habit. I see an email. I hit reply. I type in my reply. I go send to archive. And then somebody showed me you can change your send button to send an archive automatically. I thought that was kind of nice. <laughs> But getting to inbox zero, when I started this talk, actually not this time, but because I didn't have a chance to get to my email, but throughout the day, my inbox has been empty most of the day. Because I empty it. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Let's make this happen. Uh, I guess I need the mouse. It's more than just a... <laughs> um, I wanted to show you kind of how this works. So this is a typical way you might have your screen, right? You've got a calendar up there, or you've got your inbox. So, here's a thing from Will. If I want to add this to my Todoist, I've added the, the Gmail extension, so I can put that on my task list. I add that task. When I said before about adding the Chrome extension, let me do that right now. It's Todoist. Chrome, click, this isn't that hard, add to Chrome, add, mm -hmm. there it is. 
So you do the same thing to Doist, Gmail, add to extension. You have to quit and come back in for the Gmail one to work, for that little button. And it only shows when you're in an email. If I'm back at my inbox, I don't get a button up here. But this is super handy. This is what I've got on my list today. Oh, it has, there it is, been updated. Plan, next small pilot group, that's you guys. Check. <laughs> <laughs> so my tomorrow, I can say, show me my next seven days. Well, tomorrow is my Saturday, it's Sunday. But Monday, I've got planning and solitude. That's a recurring task. And all I had to do was add a task. Now I go every weekday. And now this is added and it's every work day. Pretty cool. Wasn't that hard. How can I delete that? Delete task. Done. Does this integrate with Google Keep? Do you ever use that? Uh, okay. It's, it's like the, the, I tried to play with Google, Google Keep. Yeah. I messed with it. So there's a bunch of other stuff this thing does. It has the capability of having these projects on it. If I go to the Todoist website, if I open Todoist.com, it's a more capable screen than this little drop-down. This little drop-down is a quick little thing for adding and checking stuff off. But this screen has more power to it. You can have projects. I've got things for Abby. I drop things in here. She can see it. This is a shared thing between me and her. This, this is very sad, but having the uh, re re recognizes text is huge. Yeah. You have to go so you learn a little bit about what it does. There's to do with stuff, there's videos, there's all kinds of things. The purpose of this and the reason I'm doing it is to get you to believe it in your own. So have an ability to plan, prioritize and execute according to the plan. Believe in yourself and get others to believe in your ability to get those things done. That's the thing that's most important. The delegation and the tracking some other guy's stuff, it's real easy to go, oh yeah, it does all that, that's what I really need. And then you quit planning your day and you're not getting your stuff done, but boy, are you worried about everybody else. <laughs> so this is what I want people to get. By the end of the day, it's not uncommon that your list should look something like this. It would be short. There's a couple of things left. Maybe I don't get this ELUS to S7 employee hiring plan done. Maybe I do. But if I don't get it done, in my planning, I'm going to move that forward. It's got great move forward stuff, by the way. I come up here to these three dots. I can move it. Suggested on Tuesday. Why didn't it suggest for Monday? I probably already moved a bunch of stuff to Monday. By the end of the day on Friday, my Monday looks pretty full. <laughs> I can click it for today, that'd be silly. Postpone it to tomorrow, that's a great idea. Or go to next week, that kicks it to Monday. All week long, that kicks it to the next Monday. That's a handy tool. So here's your priorities. Red. Book. Yellow, it's easy, right? Not real tricky. The three dots on the right-hand side, same thing in here. Red, yellow. So it's all synced. The app on your phone, this, they're all hooked together, they keep synchronized. It's really cool. What are my requirements that you do? What am I going to follow up on? Well, let's take a look. I probably put something in here for Monday. 
Did I? Not yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to warn you what I'm going to follow up on. <laughs> Copy. What do I have to do here? Add a task. I can add pictures, blah, 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 you can do all kinds of stuff. Attached to a website. I don't know what that is. So, <laughs> lots of cool stuff, but I am going to follow up. And I know that we'll, what will happen is, if you use this for three weeks, it will already make a difference in your life. It will have been evident that you stuff stopped falling through the cracks. Something will happen that you go, oh, I wouldn't have caught that if I wasn't doing this. It takes a week before just to get you to this. Like, God, I hate doing this. It's awesome. it's, this is like a, uh, one of those things you get assigned to do. It's two weeks and you're going, this isn't so bad, I'm used to it. But by the third week, something has happened. Now, one of the early things, I got back into this. I knew that this would happen because I'd fallen off the wagon with Franklin before. And then got back onto it. It felt better. I was like, oh, whew, you know. And but these things kept happening that pulled me off of it because I wouldn't have it. I'd lose it. I'd have to buy a new one. Very frustrating. Three weeks. Do I have everybody's commitment to do this? This is not that hard. You don't have to do all the other little blingy things that it does. But the Chrome integration, the Gmail integration, you've got to do that. That's what really makes it work, those two things. If you fail at those, ask for help. It's easy to do. Cool? All right. Now you can turn the camera off. <laughs>